All right, guys, let's move on to creating our catalog. Now, I'm here on the SLR Lounge main page, and I want you guys to, if you haven't done this already, to go to this page, go into any one of the articles that are under Chapter 6, which is creating the catalog and importing. Any of these articles in here will have the download links to the exercise files that we're going to be using for the rest of this tutorial series, for the entire Lightroom series. Um, so you can download those if you just scroll down. Each one of the articles in this chapter will include this exercise file download links where you can get either the full raw or you can get the JPEG files. Um, the JPEG files will work just as well for the tutorials, but the results may not be what you see in the tutorials because, the, of course, the raw files have more information in the shots, and so we can do more manipulating to those files. But they work for learning purposes, so depending on your connection, feel free to download whatever works for you guys. And what I want you guys to do is, after you guys download them, go to your desktop and create a folder. And I just created the folder on my desktop called Lightroom Tutorial Catalog. This is the working catalog for the Lightroom Tutorial series. So, And then I downloaded and, and unzipped those files to each of these folders, JPEGs and RAWs. Okay, and there's 22 files in each, so you guys should have the same thing. Um, you don't need both folders. If you're doing just RAWs, that's fine. But uh, for the purpose of this, I just want to show you guys I've downloaded both of them. Okay, now we're going to go load up Lightroom. We have the files. Uh, they're unzipped and in the correct catalog. We're going to be creating our catalog file inside of this folder. Um, the way I like to work is I like each project to be contained within its own folder uh, for, for each catalog, basically. So if I shoot an engagement session, well, that gets its own folder and it gets its own catalog. If I shoot a fashion shoot, it gets its own folder and its own catalog and so on. Okay, so each job is self-contained and that way it makes it really easy to work with files because you know if I move a folder it'll move the catalog files, the images and everything. Now I'm going to load up Lightroom. Click right here. Okay. Now we want to create our catalog file for this new project. So I'm going to go to File, New Catalog. And I'm going to go to the desktop. It's already selected. Go down to my little catalog folder here. Okay, now I want to type in a file name that's descriptive. And what Lightroom is going to do is it's actually going to create a folder and then it's going to put the catalog file inside of that folder with the file name that you type here. So, and, and I'll show you why you want it to be descriptive, but let me type it in right here. So Lightroom, I want it to be the Lightroom Tutorial uh, Catalog. And we'll just say dash pi because that's who's working on it. Hit save. Call it whatever you guys want. It doesn't really matter. This is going to bring up a backup dialog. It's it's basically saying the current dialog, uh, the current catalog that's open right now. Um, it's asking you questions whether you want to back it up or if you want to skip it. Well, we only have the default catalog open right now, so I don't really want to back that up. But if you guys had a different catalog, it's up to you guys where you want to back up. I don't typically back up stuff too often because it's just the catalog file that you're backing up. So I always do keep a backup of the images themselves, but not necessarily the catalog file. So I'm going to say skip this time. It opens up, it closes, and then opens up my new catalog. So here's my new catalog now, and I'm going to go back to my Windows Explorer window because I want you guys to see what it did exactly. It automatically brought up the import dialog box, by the way. That's a, a default feature you can turn on or off. So if I go back to Windows, I can see now I'm in my Lightroom tutorial catalog, the working catalog that we created on the desktop. And now it has a new folder, Lightroom Tutorial Catalog Pi. That's the same name that we used in the when we created the the new catalog. And inside that catalog, it has a bunch of files. Um, if I'm going to expand this just a little bit, I can see this first folder is all the previews of the images that are within that catalog. The next folder or, or the next item is the catalog file itself. These other ones, these are actually temporary files. So if I close these down, check this out. If I close down Lightroom you'll see all those temporary files disappear and I'm left with just my previews and my catalog file that has the same name of the folder previously okay so let's open that back up and here's why you guys want to use descriptive names because whenever you guys are working on lots of catalogs at once if you go to file and you want to open up a recent catalog it shows the catalog name first and then it shows a dash with the location um, if the catalog files are, have the same name so if you name your catalog catalog every single time, like for example right here, these two are just named catalog, well the only way to dis distinguish those two catalogs is to look here and to see what the directory and, and basically the folder structure to see where they're at. That's the only way to tell the difference. Whereas if you name them appropriately, you can quickly move between jobs just by selecting the name. Okay, now one other thing I want to show you guys. Now if I have 
this working catalog already created like we did in Windows. Um, well, what if I try, let me, let me go back to Lightroom real fast, what if I try to create a new catalog and I use the name for that catalog of the folder that was already created inside Windows Explorer right here. Well, when I hit save, instead of saving it out and creating everything, what it does is it just opens that folder. Okay, so if you're trying to create the, basically a, a new catalog with the exact same name of a folder that already exists, it's just going to take you inside that folder. Um, then you have to you know choose a name right in here. And if I typed it again right here, then it would actually create the folder and save it out. So you have two options. You can either create the folder inside of Windows and then name the the catalog something different, um, or you can have Lightroom create the folder for you. So I can do this the same way by just doing this: Lightroom tutorial catalog. Actually, I'm going to go up one step. I don't want it to be there. Okay, so I'm going to use Lightroom now to create the folder for all of our stuff, um, and call it dash pi. Hit save. It closes and reopens, and now if I go to my desktop again, I can see now I have a new folder. Okay, and if I open this up, just like we showed you before, I'm going to close Lightroom so it closes out the temporary files. Okay, so we have our catalog file and we have our previews, and it's right inside of that root folder. Whereas when we use Windows to do it, we had to put it into a subfolder inside of Windows, so it went into another folder one layer down. So it's really up to you guys how you guys like to store your files. Personally, I like the catalog file to be in a separate folder under the project folder. Um, but if you guys want the catalog file to be in the same folder as the project folder, then use Lightroom to create the catalog file, and it'll appear right there. Then you can put your JPEGs and your RAWs, I'm going to copy that over, in that same folder. So now you can see your JPEGs, your RAWs, your previews, and there's your catalog file. Whereas this, it just has it one folder in deeper. Okay, so that's just up to you guys how you guys want to set it up. It's really more of a preferential thing. Alright, so let's move on to importing our images.